story that will catch your attention perhaps too. Research is showing that as much as 20% of young people around the world suffer from anxiety. Me. And some of it might actually be coming from the things we do as parents. Mm -hmm. Director oh. of Center for Gender Health at Hartford, Hospital, Hartford Healthcare and uh, psychologist Dr. Laura Saunders, she's here with some ways to help avoid subtle ways parents can create anxiety in kids. Good morning, Doc. How are you? I am well. Happy Thursday. Happy birthday to Nicole. Thank you. And we are talking about anxiety because it's really, I think people totally underestimate, um, you know, motivation where it, anxiety is really the driver. And so in our children, it's a little harder to sometimes diagnose. And I don't necessarily want parents to diagnose, but I want people to understand that, you know, there's things that we may do as parents that kind of worsen or or reinforce that anxiety. So we're saying one in five children suffers from anxiety. Is that number up since the pandemic? I think it's probably still pretty accurate. Um, and <clears throat> for the most part, as I said, you know, a lot of times you, know, you see kids who have resistance, right? They don't want to go to school or they don't want to go to the practice. They don't want to do a lot of things. Um, and as parents, what we do is we say, OK, you can skip school today. Or you can skip this. But really what you're doing in that situation is just reinforcing that anxiety. You're yeah. encouraging the avoidance. Okay. Right, because we want to get like to the crux of what's causing this ideally. But I, you know, hearing that statistic, I think immediately, I, at least I'm speaking in my personal experience as a parent, I think, oh my gosh, I, I, we're failing our kids. Oh my gosh, I don't want to mess my kids up. What, how can I prevent, you know, giving my kids anxiety that I don't want them to have? So there are ways to, as I said, not overly encourage or overly reinforce that anxiety. And I think one of the other important things is not to shy away from conversations about feelings. Now, children are not always in touch with their feelings. Um, that takes you know time on a developmental spectrum. But being open to talking about feelings, hmm, you've had a stomach ache two or three days this week, <clears throat> I wonder if there's something you're worried about, right? Yeah. So in that in that example, you've just attached a behavior with a feeling, helping them make those connections in the future. All right, you also talk about being overly cautious. Right, um, you've, you hear the adage, you know, a child's playing on the playground, the dad says, go and have fun, the mom says, be careful, right? Yep. And that's very gendered, but it's really just being wary of how much we say, you know, don't do this and don't do that and be careful about this. I mean, I, I don't want kids standing at the edge of a cliff or, you know, on, <laughs> off of a, a tall building. But at the same time, the way that they learn is through natural consequences and experiences. Mm. And so we want to allow them the, the opportunity to learn through some of those smaller, not hugely unsafe, but smaller problems. I have to say, you know, the, when we had our son, our first child, when he would be making a lot of messes, we'd be like, oh no, don't do that. And then now we started to see his reactions like, that's messy. And right away, Andy and I said, oh my gosh, we, we don't want him to think that, you know, it's okay, life is messy, things get messy. You can have fun and play in the mess and we can clean up, it's not a big deal. So now with our daughter, child number two, we're like, ah, have at it, have fun, we'll clean you up later. <laughs> George is going like, Whoa, it's messy. So it's so interesting to see, you know, as a first time parent, not realizing how our reactions, unfortunately triggered that response in Georgia that we're trying to kind of like reverse, but it's never too late to try and reverse and kind of get to what's causing that for them, right? That's, that's definitely true. And actually what you're also noting there is that children are born with particular kind of vulnerabilities. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but one child may be a little bit more prone to anxiety, one child might not be. Mm -hmm. And so you just wanna be mindful in those situations not to you know, overly promote anxiety. And part of that really is addressing your own anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. We all carry anxiety about particular things, but there are those of us who worry a lot more and carry a lot more anxiety. And so it's being careful, as you said, Nicole, not to project our own anxiety onto our children. All right, we have to leave it there. We're out of time. Dr. Laura Saunders, a wonderful person. Thank you so much Thank for you. your sage advice. Have a great day. You too. You too. Thanks. Oh.